Hey everybody, I'm Joe. Uh, around this channel, I talk a lot about Capture One. Uh, not exclusively, but it is something that I really want to make a focus on, and that is sharing my love of this software with the world and with the YouTube community, and saying that this is a really quality and fun software to, to use in your workflow. And I make the assumption that my audience is predominantly people who are curious about Capture One or have used it and want to see their workflow be made faster and easier and also want to see Capture One be successful. So as a preamble, as I jump into what I want to talk about today, I want to make the point that you can love something and have a critique of it. You can say that you want something to be successful, but for it to be successful, it needs to examine its course, its direction, its values. I got an interesting email today. This email says that there's going to be a change in the perpetual license of Capture One. Now, full disclosure, I have the perpetual license. I have Capture One Pro, uh, and through perpetual license, I auto upgraded from Capture One 22 to 23 when it came out. So I am a perpetual license user. And a little bit into the email, they say a couple things. The first is that Capture One has historically developed a bunch of features and dumped them all in a new version near the end of the year. And that's when we get Capture One 21, 22, and most recently 23. And people didn't like that. People did not like having to wait for features that had been developed because they're part of a whole new software, effectively. They wanted to get the most recent features as soon as they're available. And you know what? I do too. I think that's a totally fair thing to request from a software that you might have a perpetual license from. So Capture One said they are responding to this and are getting rid of the yearly iterations, meaning there will never be a Capture One 24. We're just going to have Capture One Pro and it will continually be upgraded. But then we get to this point here, point two inside of this email, which says that upgraded upgrade pricing will no longer be available and will be replaced with a new loyalty scheme or info to come. Now, what does that mean? You've always been able to purchase Capture One as a software and you've been able to then pay to upgrade it to a new version when it comes out. Not only that, but for a while, you've been able to either purchase it or do a perpetual license. But upgrade pricing, which means I own Capture One 21 and I want to upgrade to 23, that's going away. And it has to go away because there's no more iteration for you to upgrade to. But a lot of people haven't upgraded every year. They've bought Capture One when they have a camera, and then three or four years later, they buy a new camera and they'll upgrade to the most recent version that can read that RAW file. That's going away. And this signals that there is a change in the way that Capture One and the parent company, Phase One, does business. Let's continue to examine this point. If you're like me, you received this email right around the beginning of the holiday season. This is the big discounts that were happening on Capture One products uh, right at the end of November, Thanksgiving season here in the United States. And this email is entirely filled with styles. Now, if you don't know what styles are, or you haven't played with them, let's explore this for a second. Styles are a collection of edits. For instance, exposure bumped by half of one stop, uh, contrast added by 10 points, black point reduced by five, all of these bundled together might be called a style. So it's a collection of edits that are applied in the same way. And by using these, you can hit a creatively uh, enjoyable and consistent edit across multiple photographs, meaning you could edit the same images with the same style, hang them on the wall, and they'd be thematically linked. This is an easy way for new photographers to be able to edit, and it's an easy way to get consistent imagery that's going to be presented next to each other. What's important to know about a style is two things. The first is you can create your own. Uh, it's actually remarkably easy to do. The second thing is that styles do not in any way add to the capacity of Capture One, and I'd like to make a point that that is a good thing. 
The alternative would be if Styles added editing capability, which means that when you purchase the software, you're purchasing the shell of the software, and only by adding micro transactions do you make it a complete package. And I think people would hate that, myself included. So the fact that Styles do not add editing capacity is actually the better system. They are just an easy way of editing. But that means that there's a certain value that I place on them, which is relatively low. If you understand how to use Capture One, you can recreate any style you want. But when we go to Capture One's website, we're gonna see that right on the main page, there is a link to understand iPad uh, version of Capture One, which I've spoken a little bit about on this channel. Capture One Live, which I think is a really nice, though slightly niche feature and then prominently displayed styles for Capture One. Click on the products button at the top and of course styles are prominently displayed there as well. When you go into the styles, you're gonna find a bunch of these ranging as packages from $30 to $180. And that seems a little high for me. $150, $180, $90 packages of styles seems like quite a bit of money to pay for recombining the features of a software you already own. So what's happening here with Styles and how does this relate to what I was talking about before? Styles are the big advertisement, the big email blast, the big thing that's prominently displayed on the website. They are Capture One's attempt to monetize their software further. But more so, they are Capture One's attempt to create a marketplace, a place where other Capture One creators can create styles and style packages and put them onto Capture One's website and Capture One gets a piece of that action as well. They want to own the marketplace as well as several of the products in it. And I get it that adding styles might be a nice add-in feature. But this seems to be the prominent thing that Capture One wants to push the conversation toward regarding their software. They also want to change their business model to more directly reflect the prominence of perpetual license. And I get the idea that if you don't have a set version at any one point in time, it becomes quite difficult to do an upgrade to that feature set. But we're seeing a change, or at least we're understanding the values that Capture One has regarding their software. That is creating a marketplace and creating additional transactions and creating the perpetual license. In other words, they are going to move more and more towards the same business model as Adobe. And if they get rid of the ability to simply purchase the software, they're going to lose a large customer base because a lot of people move to Capture One from Adobe because they don't like the idea of the perpetual license that you continually pay for. And as I said, I do use the perpetual license, so I am a customer using this feature set, but not everybody does. And I want to know from Capture One what their goal is here because here's the way it looks from the outside. It seems that they are shifting their business model to create more transactions for extant users and to create more consistent transactions across the board. And they are developing their iPad software, their styles platform, and using their time developing those rather than developing the missing feature sets within Capture One. And I am specifically referring to AI masking, the one feature that is completely missing in Capture One that is dominant inside of Lightroom. And I've made the argument before that once you have masked an area, Capture One edits that masked area better, but you have to mask it first. And Lightroom does that for simplified areas better and easier. Complicated masked areas, I've argued, are actually easier to mask inside of Capture One. I've got a whole video about that. So I would love to see 
Capture One describe their business model to us. It's obvious that it's shifting, that their priorities and values are changing. And I want to know what their goal is. I'd love to see a two and five year plan from them. AI masking within a year, let's say, and being able to select individual subjects within two years and saying that we are going to use the new styles platform in order to develop these products faster and better for you. Or are they going to be focusing their attention on taking the iPad software and making it functional, which so far really hasn't been. I'd love to see a roadmap from Capture One because right now we're seeing a shifting of a business model and we don't know that we're seeing a shifting in their development values. And that concerns me. Not enough to change what I do, not enough to jump software to something else by any means. I still love Capture One and I still want it to be successful. But we are seeing that they have a change in the way they're doing business. And by the way, for a little historical context for people, this has been going on for a while. A few, only about two years ago maybe, Capture One decided to start selling licenses for their software and distribute them through the Pro Group here in the United States. Meaning that you've been able to go into your local camera store and get a one year Pro subscription for less than purchasing it straight from Capture One online. And this was to capture more of the hobbyist and enthusiast uh, segment of the population. The part of the population that has not historically used Capture One. And just the other day, I received an email indicating that I am now a preferred Capture One member, which I didn't know was a thing. But apparently this means that if I have any service ticket issues with Capture One, me as a preferred member am jumping the line. That's them trying to care about the user experience with their software. And I think that's exactly the right mindset. And trying to get into a space where they are uh, serving the hobbyist and enthusiast community is a great thing. So a lot of their changes in their business model over the last two years have been in the right direction. But now that we see a shifting in the way that they actually do transactions, I want to know a roadmap for them. So are you concerned about where Capture One is headed? Are you worried that they're headed into microtransaction uh, territory or that they are potentially going to make style something that make using their software for new customers easier and they're going to use that platform to fuel the development of AI masking and other exciting features? I would love to hear what you think is going on in Capture One and uh, I want to end by just iterating that my goal is to help people use Capture One and to enjoy it and to love it. And I want to see this software thrive as a important part of the photography and editing community. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.